Parents Union. I hope you're all well. I hope you're all thriving. Hello to America's beautiful children. We love you. Um, and you know, as I said this week, I am so excited um, as every week um, to bring dynamic guests on um, and talk about what's happening in their communities um, and how they're overcoming. Uh, and so today we have a special guest and her name is Charnel Blevins from Speak Up. Hello, Charnel. Hello, Christina. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm surviving our safer at home with my six children and husband. It's a, it's been a joy. <laughs> right, right. Sheltering in place, uh, staying safe and keeping others safe. Yes. Um, tell everyone that's watching who you are and what you do. So my name is Charnel Blevins. I'm a parent educator engagement coordinator at Speak Up. I work primarily with African-American parents in uh, using their collective voice to increase academic achievement of African-Americans here in Los Angeles, as well as helping them collectively, uh, individually advocate for their children. And so we've been working very hard on ways to increase academic achievement and closing that achievement gap. Wow, and so talk about um, Speak Up. Um, how did that come into, um, how did that whole organizational thing evolve? So Speak Up is about five years old and started out with a group of parents who wanted to have a say in their children's education, like all parents, right? You volunteer at school, you're doing things at home with your children, but you're finding out sometimes, depending on the school district, that there's people around who's really not listening to what um, parents are saying. It's not that you have to agree with us, but listen and hear and let's come to a consensus. And so there was a group of parents who decided they wanted to uh, help a particular school board member uh, win the school board race or a particular mm -hmm. candidate, I should say, win the school board race and came together and helped that candidate win. So they're currently on the school board and really right. wanted somebody who was listening to all stakeholders, not just um, emboldened by one subset of the stakeholders at the schoolhouse. And so it birthed out of that. Those group of parents came together and said, we really need an organization that has parents' voices so that the parents can be heard. Because no one in education is as passionate or has such a vested interest in what students are doing but their parents and their guardians and the people that's who are true. taking care of them. And so that's how Speak Up uh, was birthed. We do a lot on the political side and a lot in the advocating. And so mm -hmm. that is what we do. So at school board member meetings, you might see us talk about things that are affecting our students at different um, other type of meetings where parents come together. And so that's where Speak Up is. And that's what we've done for the last five years. And we've been pretty successful uh, one of the things that we're pretty proud about is that California is one of the few states uh, of two, there's only two in the, st in the union, that does not look at growth data. And so now LA Unified is using, or actually publishing growth data for their schools. And so you can get that for their traditional schools now. And that's something, a victory for us in the last uh, six, six to nine months. This school year. And you know, um, we here at National Parents Union definitely value parent voice, um, parents being able to speak up and actively participate in their child's education um, and advocate for best practices um, in the educational environment, no matter where their children are, right? Um, I always talk about you know, my advocacy um, for children, although right now, currently, I'm a homeschool mom. Um, okay. But previously to that, my kids were in a district school and I advocated there. But just because I have my kids in homeschool doesn't mean that my activism stops um, with just my children. So I so appreciate what it is um, that you guys do um, and how you you use parents' voice at the forefront as a driving force. Um, that is amazing. And so uh, talk about your, your background in education and your knowledge of the system. So, 
So uh, my background, you not the up as you said for speak up. The up means united parents. So we're coming together united. But my background in education is that I started out of college at a, a scholarship foundation that was founded by Golden State Mutual Life Insurance Company, which at the time was the third largest insurance company. and operated insurance company in the country. Um, myself, if you remember the movie Boomerang, where all you walk through the halls and you see uh, black people in every right. position from CEO to secretary to the janitor, that's the company that uh, birthed this uh, organization. And so working with them, we knew all of the CEO, all of the presidents and chancellors of every university in the state of California, as well as the state of Michigan. Uh, we worked and to give scholarships to students who were uh, and they still do it, who are business degrees and to help them do better, students of color. And then I worked at the American Cancer Society working for, in education, uh, for all youth programs in LA County with the American right. Cancer Society. And at that time, I was chair of the DARE uh, committee at the district at LA Unified. So I've been partnering hand in hand with LA Unified for a long time. And then I came home and, and was a stay-at-home mom and raised my children. But because of my background with nonprofits, I volunteered, I wrote grants, I did all kinds of different things for uh, my children's schools and the schools that they attended, did fundraising and things like that, and as well as other nonprofits I worked at to keep my hand in that. And then uh, the principal of my children's school said, you know what, with your uh, experience, you should come and work for me. They changed the parent engagement role here at on campuses. Uh, come work for me. My husband's like, great, because now you've been on campus all the time. You might as well get paid for it. Right. So it was a win-win for my family. Exactly. And I start working, yep, <laughs> and start working at the school site, helping parents navigate the educational system of LA Unified. And uh, I have a my second oldest was diagnosed with autism at five that on a committee, the community um, advisory committee, the school board on things deals with social education at the time and a couple of other things that I did. And then I got promoted to a local district office and really worked in parent engagement and then Speak Up came along last year and said, would you join our team? We would really love to have you. And I said, I would really love to to be here because it's about parent empowerment and really letting them know how do you navigate the public space for your children and how do you get the best education that your children can get and so that they can reach their potential. And so for me, I've done a lot with the traditional public school space, but my children have gone to charters, they've gone to independent private schools, they've, they've gone to non-public schools. So I understand that we as parents need to make a choice for our children that matches what they need at that time in their education. Right, and so, you know, I want parents to know that they hear this terminology all the time, parent engagement, parent involvement, you know, um, and to me, um, that looks like putting power in the hands of parents to make the best informed decision about their child's education so that they are able to thrive, right? Um, right. And making sure that you, the parents, um, understand what that means for your child. Because you know, K through eight, K through twelve, you don't get another chance. Right. <laughs> um, and so, we want our, right? And so, we want our children um, not just barely surviving through that K through twelve experience, but able to thrive, be well rounded. Um, and being able to be, you know, productive in their adulthood. And so that block of time, K through 12, is huge. Um, it's, it would behoove you if you could do that early intervention and understanding piece, um, knowing where you're headed when your child is still young. But sometimes that doesn't happen, and then we have to jump in and decide to make a decision um, and we want you to make the best decisions possible for your children. Um, and so how have you been able to um, put the parents back in power in a meaningful way where their voices are heard? So one of the things that the parents that I work with and 
what we do is we do a lot of research. So the parents that I have are willing to read those 500 page policy documents. They're, they're willing and they're open to hear about the other side. One of the things that I explain to them and, and hopefully they hear is that, you know, no one knows how my home is ran. Mm -hmm. But I also don't know how that teacher's classroom is ran. But let's sit together and talk about both sides of it so I can understand and we can come to a consensus. Because it's never going to be my way completely and it's never going to be the teacher's way, but what best can we do or the school's way, what best can we do to uh, help that student? And so one of the things that I found out because LA Unified is so large, I mean, it's the yeah. largest school district in California, it's the second largest mm -hmm. school district in the nation, is that most people don't understand how to navigate it. You know, you get mad at the teacher and then you go to the school board. There's so many steps in between there that you can go to get this solved. And so what are those steps? So one of the things that I do is I teach parents what those steps are. Who should you go to when you're having a problem? So if you're having a problem with the teacher and you talk to the teacher and you can't get that solved, of course you go to their administrator. And you, there's, depending on the levels in the school, depends on which, which uh, person you speak to and how long you stay on the school site. But at LA Unified, they have something called a local district. And so you can go into the local district and there's a parent and community and help you navigate. So everybody's looking for a win-win. And then if you can't find anything there at the local district, there's certainly offices at Beaudry, which I call Beaudry, but that's the, that's the street that the main office sits on, that headquarters office and that you go through there and you speak to them. And then if you can't get anything there, then you can go to the board, you can go to the superintendent, you can go to the LA County, you can go to the state and you also have federal, uh, you can go to the federal government department of ed to talk about this. And so most people don't know how to navigate the district. Right. And then one of the things that I, that I tell parents is remember that's another human being on that side. We have to look at them as a human being. So if you go to their boss first, they're gonna be upset and they're not gonna wanna help you. And so it's really about looking at the other person as a human being, looking for a consensus and a win-win. And so those are the things that I talk to with my parents. Read, look at, read the information that's coming on. Uh, I, the, in my work, I work with other groups of parents as well about the LCAP, which is the way that the state of California funds public schools, local control funding and different things. But we're looking at data, we're looking at from experts, we're getting that information so that we're coming to the table informed right. and that we know what's going on. And in some of our cases uh, recently, we've been with um, very uh, high level uh, people at different districts and different educational organizations. And so when you go into those meetings, you do have to be informed and you do need to know what's going on because you have a very short period of time to talk about what the, the issue is or the comp compliments that you want to give for the district or that person or that organization and so you want to be informed and you want to have a great critical thinking conversation and then the other thing is is that um, particularly in this this state of COVID-19 with black students you also have to make sure that you sound the alarm and let people know that um, increasing academic achievement for African Americans is needed it is past the need it is at, um, you're burning down the house. And so we need to have, uh, not only do we need to have the fire department, but we have to have the architect and the construction crew in place because the house is basically about that much left of it. <laughs> and so we need to make sure we're rebuilding and we're, we're putting the next generation um, in a place where they can meet their potential, reach their potential, and it's not they, if they don't, it's not because we didn't give them the education to do so. And you know, I always talk about this, so I feel you, um, the matter of urgency. Um, as a matter of fact, um, you've heard me say, and many people have heard me say, I don't care, we gotta start a California black parent wildfire, okay? <laughs> yes. uh, this matter of urgency is uh, uh, over our children's quality education is a right now, as a matter of fact, a yesterday thing, right? Uh, right. And so we're marshalling in a new era. 
of demanding um, quality education, um, that our children be able to thrive, um, that you know parents be respected um, as partners, um, and that you know the the end I, of the monopolization on stakeholders, because I have seen where districts monopolize on certain stakeholders, certain parents, um, right. to get them to do and say um, exactly what they want them to do and say, and that's not the true parent voice. Um, that is not our experiences triangulated in. Um, and so that way the data is, is, is there, right? I always arm people with data, but also let's triangulate our experiences in. Um, let us be able to uh, bring our children's experiences to the forefront and be respected partners, meaningful collaboration, right? We getting to the table is one right. thing, um, but being able to walk away with an action um, is a different step. And so I appreciate um, that you guys are pushing in, in different areas, um, you know, not just at one level, but in, it takes a multi-level approach. And that mm -hmm. it sounds like that's what you guys are doing. So what is happening um, right now with Speak Up and Parents during our COVID school closures? So Speak Up has really been on the forefront um, helping parents with these school closures. So we have a lot of parents at uh, Speak Up and members that we work with who never really took the time to learn the technology side of the apps that were out there. Not any right. fault of their own, but LA Unified has something called the Parent Portal that allows parents to be able to look at their IEPs, their individualized educational plans for their students. It also allows them to look at the attendance and grades and assignments that their students are having. And so in the busyness of working and all the way that our world was, and if you've been in Los Angeles, you know, it can take you two hours to get 15 miles during rush yeah. hour. <laughs> it's just crazy. That's, that's one of the things I'm thankful for this um, COVID-19 right. that I don't, I'm not driving like that anymore. Um, four hours. I commend you guys I, every time I go to LA, I'm like, how are the people that live in LA dealing with this <laughs> level of traffic? Um, because it's not I, as bad as New York, crazy. but it's it's, it's okay. Oh, okay, yeah. It's, you know, New it, York, it, you can, it can take you four hours to go one mile, but um, yeah, right? <laughs> yes, it, yes, it's it's just crazy. But in this time. Um, we're really helping parents be able to navigate those systems. So some parents, you know, you and I are using Zoom through Facebook Live. Um, right. So when we have meetings with parents, we're teaching them how to use Zoom. We're teaching them how to get on uh, Classroom Dojo, which is a lot of classes are using. We're teaching them how to get on the parent portal and looking at those different things. And so it's, uh, that's one piece of it that we call iFamily. We also have a piece that's iTutors. We know that there is a bigger slide happening this year because of students not being in the classroom. So right. we have uh, tutors from all over the country and particularly in LA that is uh, helping students with their homework, with their work 101. Uh, we have uh, the University of California, Santa Barbara has some of their interns who understand special education working with our students who have IEPs and, and have a disability. Uh, I shouldn't say have, with a disability, students with a disability, um, people first language. And so uh, yeah, no. <laughs> they are working with them. We have USC, the University of Southern California and uh, Occidental College also with uh, students that they're bringing forth to tutor our students and work with them. And so that's one of the pieces that we're working with, as well as we have matched with other organizations, educational organizations with a One Family LA campaign to donate to families who are in financial need. Oh, that's and amazing. So, so we have a couple of different programs that we're working with in this time of COVID-19 that is heightened for families. And so we're trying to make sure that our students are succeeding, but also that our families are getting some of the things that they need during this time. And so we're right. just trying to do a little help. Yeah, well, you know, that's amazing because, you know, um, a lot of times we talk about, well, the kid needs to do this work. Um, your child needs to be logged in. 
But what about their basic needs, right? Like right. children are not going to approach work hungry, right? I mean, right. it's it's not going to be a successful approach. Um, and the parents are not going to be able to approach helping their child learn when they trying to figure out how I'm going to feed my kid at lunch, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it, it can be approached, but how successful is that going to be? Um, and so removing some of those burdens, I find um, then you actually are able to thrive better. You're not just barely surviving. We want to thrive and not just barely survive, right? Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, were there some hindrances um, to parents um, that you support at the beginning of this school closure, you know, being able to access their children's work or um, maybe even Chromebooks, iPads, whatever they may be? And how did you guys overcome that period of time? So what we did was we really sat down and spoke to our parents. So we have, there's several other people like me that are parent engagement coordinators. Uh, we work in different areas. Los Angeles is very big. When we say Los Angeles, um, it's huge. My husband, yes. my, my husband works in uh, Los Angeles County. And from my, I, I live on the Southern tip of Los Angeles and he works on the Northwest tip. And it's a, seven, it's a 41 mile drive. It's 41 mm -hmm. miles between our home and there, and that's still LA Unified. And so it's, it's crazy about that. So what we've done as different coordinators and different field workers is we sat down and we talked to our parents about what they needed, what was going on. Uh, we had some time, we thought in LA that it would only be about two weeks that we would be at home. And then all of a sudden now we're into our sixth, sixth, sixth seventh week. And mm -hmm. so, at the first part, it was, did you get your information from your school? Did you know that the schools are giving out food? LA Unified is one of the, it is the largest food distributor right now during this time, believe it or not. Um, so they put their kitchen workers to work and providing still food. And at the start of it, they were providing food, not only for the kids, but for parents as well, the adults in the homes. And yeah, so- we wanted to make sure that that parents had that access. One of the things that we use is Facebook. Uh, a lot of our parents like our Facebook page and find out a lot of information going on. Our communications department has been completely on it to make sure that what is coming down from the governor, what is coming down from the superintendent, what's coming down from charter school organizations that our parents understand what is happening. And we wanted to make sure that they knew that. And so that has been the biggest challenge is to make sure that we're gathering the information and that we're giving it to parents and that we're also finding out where they are, what is needed. So the first day, the first couple of weeks, we weren't doing a tutoring program, but we realized as it started to go on that, there, that parents like me, I'm still working a 40, 40 hour a week job, right? Might not have the time to sit down and figure out new math. Um, and so we need somebody who understands this new math and, and college students are coming home without jobs. They're staying in the house and they're no longer able to do the completely college experience and hang out with their friends all the time when they have downtime, but they're willing to give of themselves and tutor families. And so we have them sitting down with tutors and then you have parents who needed to know, how do I know what... Okay, everything is on um, Schoology is what LA Unified used. L everything is on Schoology. How do right. I read what the teacher is giving my student? And so that's how we, it just kind of came about organically, but mm -hmm. it's, it's working. And so we're very happy to be able to help parents in that space. And then one of the things that we started to realize is that our um, director of special education is always on the pulse of what's happening with our students with disabilities. And for a while, students weren't getting the services, additional services that are part of their IEPs, which is federally mandated for them to get. And so there's a special ed task force that has really sat down with uh, leaders in special education across the nation and across the state, as well as within the district and talked about how do we meet those needs. And so we were very happy to hear last week that the idea law wasn't gutted. Right. The Individuals with right. Disability Education Act wasn't gutted during this time. And so these services have to be met. And so it's really partnering with 
um, these organizations and for the district and these school, these local educational agencies to make sure that students are still getting their services and how they're getting their services. So it is kind of like um, running to many fires, putting out uh, with a water hose, but um, we've gotten on top of those. Don't you know. forget that. We start the <laughs> That is Can true. That is true. Starting others, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, right. And so our biggest thing at Speak Up is to make sure that our students are educated and that we're not losing a generation here in Los Angeles. Right. In the state of constitutional amendment five, which repeals Prop 209. And so one of the things that we found in uh, K through 12 education is that programs that was specifically that you could put monies behind to specifically help different racial groups you can't do anymore in right. the K through 12 uh, space because of Prop 209. And so we're really looking at trying to repeal that act and hopefully it's on our ballot in November. It hits, uh, in fact, right now, I believe it's in committee to come out of the committee so that at the state level so it can come to the ballot box for us um, because we want to see that next generation of kids no matter who they are succeed and so exactly. if we have to put some money behind it we we track kids based on race so exactly. if we track them and we know how they're doing academically we should be able to put money behind that problem and so and i say problem but behind that issue so that we can close those gaps and so that's something that came about and we're like, oh no, the, the state legislature will be in session. We have to get behind this and let them know that we care. And so it is putting out fires and starting new ones and putting right. them out, but it's, it's sitting down and coming to a consensus and do things as best for the majority of students. And you know, I found that that funding issue to be a huge um, hindering block to the parents that I was supporting through African American Parent Advisory Councils. Um, mm -hmm. And that, you know, it was like, well, we don't have funding for um, African American uh, Advisory Council initiatives. And we're like, these are your initiatives, though, because we're talking about career, college career readiness, right. um, student and parent engagement, right? We're just advising on the way that that should look so that the funding will be for average daily attending black student will be allocated, right? right. <laughs> In a way that is not experimental, but that what you, you utilize the funding on has, uh, you know, efficacy and is research data backed, right? Um, and that it's allocated equitably and in a way that it trickles down to them. And so I found that the pushback on that was like, as if you're trying to create a silo or you're trying to create some kind of category of funding. And I'm like, I'm talking about the average daily attending black student. What are you doing right. with those funds, right? Um, right? Why are we having this battle for two years and not able to implement anything, but yet, like you said, um, the students are tracked according to demographics, according to ethnicity. Um, and so it's very, you know, I, hopeful that something will change and, and change immediately in that area, um, because really it, it harms in a way that people don't understand um, unless they've had the battle for what's equitable and what's fair um, on, on the funding side. And so I so appreciate that. Um, you know, if you could, if people want to reach out to you, as you can see in her background, uh, <laughs> says, yeah, I love it though. I love it. Uh, <laughs> Charnel Blevins, and you can contact her, Charnel, at speakupparents.org. Check them out, speakupparents.org. If you're in LA, uh, you need to know some more information, more help. You might, as a parent, you may need 424 225 2307. And Charnel, go ahead um, and give a final word or thought. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Christina. It's been a great conversation. I want to also let parents know, particularly if you're in Los Angeles, California, or across the nation, there's a couple of ways to really join with us in our, in our fight for um, equity for African American students in education. Yeah. And so we have an African American Education Coalition meeting this coming Friday. It's 10 o'clock uh, Pacific Daylight Time. And so um, you can find out about that on our Speak Up website and uh, as well as our Speak Up Facebook page. 
And then we also have uh, our social media is under Black Kids Can't Wait. So anytime right. you see Black Kids Can't Wait, Twitter, on Facebook, that parents standing for African American achievement, achievement and closing that achievement gap. And we're inviting you to join that conversation. Uh, particularly, we want to know on our social medias, wherever you are, for you to join us. And so it's about all of us, it's about uplifting all of us so that we can have a better city, a better county, a better state, and a better nation. Because if we can make sure everybody's educated and uh, do great things. Black kids can't wait, I love it. So, <laughs> you know, I will talk to you soon. Thank you so much again for joining me today and bringing forth this information. Uh, you all have been watching Managing Day to Day with me, Christina Laster, and National Parents Union. I hope you're all well. I hope you're all thriving. Goodbye, America's Beautiful Children. We'll see you again tomorrow. Same place, same time, at National Parents Union Facebook Live. Bye-bye. Thank you, Christina. Bye-bye. Anytime, bye-bye.